On behalf of uh, Dr. Benson Lau, welcome everybody here today. Uh, you, you have no idea how much it means to uh, Dr. Benson Lau to have his friends, to have his colleagues, and to have his supporters here tonight. Now, if you're wondering who I am, my name is Jim Bamford, and I'm uh, Benson Lau's identical twin. <laughs> Although, I must say that I'm a little taller and certainly much better looking. <laughs> I'm the campaign manager for Dr. Benson Lau. And just as a couple of comments, first of all, uh, I've lived in Scarborough now for the last 25 years. I've raised my family here, I've worked here, I've played here, and I've enjoyed an excellent quality of life here in Agent Court. I was also a member of the Toronto Police Service for over 37 years. And I was also the unit commander for my last eight years of my career where I was in charge of this area here, so I know it very, very well. I love Scarborough, and I love Agent Corp. And I'll tell you, I'm involved in this campaign because I want the very, very best for our community. And I believe that Dr. Benson Lau is the right man for the right time in the right place. Agent Court. Now Canada, I'll tell you right now, has a new conservative government. And they have accomplished more in the first year than the Liberals did in the last 13 years. We've had an honest government, we've had a good government, and we got one fantastic leader. And I'm telling you, the polls are telling us that we're going to do extremely well, not only in Ontario, but in the 416 area. Scarborough needs a voice in that new government, somebody who is respected by the party, somebody who has a, a, a passion for the safety, for the health, for the accountability, and for taxes. Somebody who is honest, somebody who has integrity, and somebody who has respect for his peers. The time has come for Agent Court to elect a Conservative Member of Parliament and to elect Dr. Benson Lau. And I'm going to tell you, with your help, with your support, we're going to do it. All the way from Ottawa, we do have a uh, guest speaker, Raheem uh, Jaffer, and he's the National Caucus Chair for the Conservative Party of Canada. He's also a Member of Parliament for Edmonton. That's Dracona. I know Benson a long, long time. Um, I remember the first time I saw Benson is when he did his uh, first elect a mandatory election and he knocked on my door and I opened my door and I said, who is this freckle face? He is such a baby, how can he run for politics? And I was impressed. And later found out it's uh, Benson. So since then I was very impressed and, I, and actually I have a love and hate relationship with Benson. <laughs> the, the reason why is that like, I love Benson because he's my friend and he's always very helpful. And he is a doctor, right? He's a physician. And you didn't know his doctor makes house call, right? But he also did office call. The reason why is because one time that I hurt my ankle and then he came to my office and said, oh, I was impressed. I said, that is the difference. I hope that the medical department won't charge him for that. But anyway, um, he is a good friend and he's very helpful. I have been with him for a long time and we've been involved in a lot of community uh, activities and he's very active and um, he has a lot of energy and one thing is I really admire him. Recently, I keep on asking, when did he take this picture? He looks so much different and younger. And I remember about like, two years ago, he still had a big tummy. And I just laugh at him and I say, he looks like Santa Claus at that time. But suddenly now he looks so fit. And I just wonder why he suddenly he's ch changed so much. And now I know, because he's prepared to run for politics, he has to look good. Is he good? Does he look fit? And now I'm not talk about him, I hate him. I have a hate relationship with him because he's a doctor. So and he's also my doctor. So I hate to go to see him in his office and then he will tell me oh, what's wrong with, with me. So I, I also involved in politics and I'm enjoying politics. And I feel that the Chinese is underrepresented. And Okay, I always emphasize that we should not for Chinese, we should not just vote for Chinese. I don't buy that. I say, we should vote for good people. Okay? <laughs> vote for the person that is really representing the Chinese or the, uh, the community and the country as well. Okay, so when to, when to, but I always said that when two candidates is about the same qualification and I will go for, for uh, Chinese, I have to, in a way, um, a preference. But in here, 
uh, I support Ben Simmons not just because he's my friend, a Chinese, and he is a really good candidate. And I believe that he has all the energy and he has all the qualification to be a good MP. My friends and uh, colleagues, uh, thank you very, very much for coming to support our friend uh, Benson. I know you're all uh, extremely busy professionals and rarely have time for, your, for yourself and your for family, yet you all want to come and help our friend Benson and send him to Ottawa so we can make sure our government taxes us fairly, i.e. lower taxes, and make sure our government has accountability and doesn't spend our tax dollars like the Liberal State. We'll make sure law and order is a priority for us law-abiding citizens. And as a frontline family physician for many years, he knows the healthcare system inside out. So I'm sure he'll do every, everything he can to make sure our healthcare system is efficient, cost-effective, and patient-focused. As a visible minority immigrant coming to Canada with just a few bucks in his pockets, Benson exemplifies what hard work can achieve. In Ottawa, I'm sure he'll make sure multiculturalism remains strong and vibrant in Canada. I've known Benson for over 20 years. He is an honest and honorable man. He's easygoing and can and he can make you feel very comfortable and he can make you feel like you are his best friend in just a few minutes. He can always find a compromise in conflicts, and I found that he can always negotiate solutions to problems. He's a very good husband to Grace, and a wonderful father, wonderful father to Jacqueline. Benson has been a loyal conservative for as long as I can remember, in good times and in bad times. He is not a political opportunist. That is because he truly believes in conservative values, as we all do. That is self-reliance and not just handouts. Honest and hard work. Fair tax, government accountability, safe streets, and family values. This is, these are the things that a lot of us believe in, and I hope Benson will take these kind of values to all of them. To summarize, then, to summarize everything that I said, so please, all nice, do help elect Dr. Benson Lau in the next federal, federal election for the writing of Scarborough Aging Card. If you don't know where that writing is, it's from 401 going north to Steel, and from uh, Victoria Park, that is where this restaurant is, going east to Brindley and Midland. And tell a lot of you here are physician friends of mine and physicians, and tell your patients living in the area called M1W and M1T about Benson. Ask them whether they can help with his campaign, putting signs on the uh, on the lawns and and the, and the, and and just let Benson know about the names and let the gym know about the names so we can uh, put signs on on their lawns. Ask them whether they would campaign for 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 Benson uh, either as volunteers or going door to door. And most important, uh, write checks to him. <laughs> Personal checks, please, because don't use medicine professional corporation checks, because apparently co uh, corporation checks are not uh, accepted these days with, uh, with Election Canada. So in order to get your tech credit for, for, for your donation, please use your own personal checks. And the maximum donation is uh, $1,100. And uh, so, just to sum up, I just hope that all of you will help Benson in the next federal election, which hopefully won't be too very, won't be very long. Thank you very much for coming. What we're talking about here is a federal election, and I would like to first of all charge the glass to Her Majesty the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, the Queen. The Queen. And also, I would like you to charge your glass to the best country in the world, Canada. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Now, please stay standing. You're going to have a real treat. Now, where are you? Uh, about uh, about two months ago, I was at a, 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 a fundraiser dinner for John Tory, and at that time, there was a young lady by the name of Rosa Chan, and Rosa Chan came up and she sang the national anthem, and she didn't think she did so well, but I thought she did absolutely super. So this young lady is going to lead us all in singing "O Canada," and I hope our accompaniment is all ready. Are you ready back there? Well, let's go. I'll sing with you. And we want you all to join us, because believe me, it's going to be brutal if it's just the two of us. a country that gives us our freedom, provides us with opportunity, gives us peace, and gives us security. We pray, we pray for our Prime Minister, for those who give leadership, for all those who serve in our Parliament, for our brave men and women of our armed forces who unselfishly give so much in the cause of freedom throughout the world. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for the food that we are about to enjoy for those who prepared the meal, for those who served it, we now eat and drink to thy name, with love, with honor, and with respect. All men. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy your dinner. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have uh, the very distinct privilege this evening of introducing our guest speaker. Now, you've heard that uh, Raheem is actually our pinch hitter, um, but boy, we couldn't have done much better. Uh, many of you, like I, remember when uh, a 25-year-old young man from, uh, from Edmonton, 25, um, found his way uh, after a hard, long fight into Parliament and did a stellar job keeping the Christian Dion Cabal accountable. You know, the reality is that, that we went through 13 years of tax and spend opportunistic government. And folks like the next speaker worked very, very, very hard in order to change that. And they have made a difference. Um, so you may or may not know that um, our keynote speaker tonight uh, has a great deal in common with Benson Lau. Sorry, folks, a whole crowd over there. But um, both individuals um, come from families of new Canadians. Both individuals believe deeply and sincerely in this Canadian democracy. Both individuals want desperately to have a fair and equitable immigration system, to have safe streets in this country. And we know that our dear friend Benson Lau 
is leaving a very, very successful medical practice because he believes in those same values and principles. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct privilege this evening to introduce our guest speaker, a gentleman who is as decent as he is dedicated, who is as capable as he is committed to this great country. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Raheem Jaffer. Thanks very much, David. It's a great uh, pleasure to be here with all of you this evening. Uh, distinguished guests on the head table, it's nice to see my friends David and David and Pauline and everyone else who's here. It's great to see you all. Uh, pleasure to be here with you this evening on behalf of the Government of Canada and all my colleagues in Ottawa. It's nice to bring greetings, but also spend some time with you this evening. And what a wonderful meal. Now I know why Jason loves his job so much. He gets to travel around and eat at all these great meals, and now I get a chance to get a taste of it tonight. So it's a great pleasure to join you all this evening. And I know I was the second choice uh, to Jason, but I know the joke was saying that Jason, despite, I just wanted to clarify something. Some people um, were saying, well, he said, well, what happened to Jason? Well, as you saw maybe last night on the news, we had an interesting visitor in Ottawa yesterday, and apparently, I think, Jason and, and he had some uh, issues when it came to uh, some policy, and apparently had a wrestling match, Jason and Arnold Schwarzenegger. So you can imagine who won, and that's the real reason why Jason isn't here. Don't tell him I told you so, but, uh, but nonetheless, no, Jason, would have loved to have been here as he travels. I think he's one of our hardest working caucus members uh, that I know. And Jason and I share a very significant uh, anniversary on Saturday. On Saturday, it'll be 10 years that both he and I have served as members of parliament. It'll be the 10th year anniversary for us. Thank you. And uh, hopefully it won't be too much longer where we'll be joined by uh, Benson Lau as well. Dr. Benson Lau, it'll be great to have him as part of our team. But a lot has happened in 10 years, and it's been a great, uh, a great uh, just honor to be a part of all the changes. A lot of people say to me, Raheem, wow, you spent 10 years in Parliament. Did you get there in your diapers? Because they often think I'm too young to be a parliamentarian for 10 years. But it's true, I, I have been, and I was quite young, like Jason Kenney. We got elected in 1997, both from Alberta, and uh, we were both in our 20s. I was 25 and Jason was 28. So it was quite a, a change, because as you can see, sometimes when you watch uh, the television, if you see some of the clips of things, especially over the years in the House of Commons, the average age is a lot higher than 25 or, or 28. But now we're changing that, and you know, it's the Conservative Party that's changing that on so many grounds. We're breaking so many new grounds when it comes to ethnic diversity, when it comes to age, when it comes to better representation of the population. And, uh, you know, despite what some people have said in the past, it's nice to see that it's the Conservative Party that's doing a lot of these great things and bringing new people and giving new people a chance to be able to serve. Now, thank you very much. I just want to share with you a little bit of my own background so you have a little bit of an idea of how I got to where I, I am and, and what influenced me because I think that has a profound effect on all politicians and no doubt has a profound effect on our friend here tonight that we're all supporting who's our candidate here, Mr. Lau. Uh, when I look at his, uh, his background, I mean not only a leader here in this particular riding but in the Chinese community, we already know how his hard work as a doctor, the people that he helps and experience that he'll be able to bring to our party when it comes to health care, because that's something that we could definitely continue to build on. We have great leadership currently with Tony Clement, our health minister, but to have uh, Benson be able to join that will be just fantastic. And I was looking over, uh, and I've, I've met Benson, I know, at a number of events in the past over the years, but just the, his, his amount of, of, of credentials, you know, a member of the Toronto Police Service Board, uh, you know, been on the Commission of Police Services, Secretary of, of Boards, of Care First for Seniors Community Association, director of the Chinese Cultural Center. It's incredible amount of history and experience and the type of history experience that we need when it comes to representing Canadians better across the country. And I know that once we finally get to an election, and I wish I could uh, rub the crystal ball and tell you when that's going to be, your, your guess is probably as good as mine. Although when I think about who the current MP in this riding is, we couldn't have an election soon enough to get rid of Mr. Kerry Gianni, that's for sure. You know, 
for the 10 years that I've served as a member of parliament, and fortunately I was facing Mr. Karagiannis for a number of years uh, in government, it's nice to finally see him on the opposition benches, and I know that being one of the fun, yeah, being one of the, go ahead and clap, I'm happy to hear, uh, hear you clap on that. But, um, Hopefully, uh, after the next election, he'll be removed completely from Parliament because he's one of the most partisan, difficult people I've ever had to meet. Because I'll admit, I have some friends in other parties, and often you can actually get some work done. But uh, him, Jim and myself, most recently, for the last year and a half, have been sitting on the Immigration Committee together. And I'll tell you, he's got to be one of the most bitter guys and most difficult guys that I've ever had to deal with, and, and most unreasonable. And I'll tell you, I know he's afraid. He's afraid of Benson and the organization that's doing in this, uh, this riding, because I know it's not going to be an easy ride for him the next time. So I want to just give you guys a, a vouch uh, of, of a, just all the hard work is paying off. And I know your team's working hard, and that's why members like myself and Jason Kenny and so many of us want to come out and give our help as much as we can to encourage you, because that's what's going to make the difference, your hard work in electing a good man like Benson so that we can make a majority government in the next parliament, we can keep building on the successes that we've had as a conservative government. So thank you for all your hard work, and I really appreciate that. And all of our caucus colleagues really appreciate that, including, obviously, the Prime Minister. So I wanted to make sure I shared that with you. But um, before I talk a little bit about some of our achievements, my uh, family had an interesting experience, and I think probably similar to some of you uh, in the crowd, and I know some people that you might know, but my family came to Canada in the early 70s. Now, some of you may know the story. I, my family came from Uganda in East Africa, and the reason why we left Uganda was because there was a radical dictator who came to power. His name was Idi Amin. And he decided to kick out all the South Asians, especially, uh, who were not black Africans, even though my family had been there for three generations. It was our home. But overnight, everything was taken away from us, and we were forced to leave and come to Canada. Now, we were very lucky to come to Canada because we lost everything, but Canada welcomed us with open arms. And when we came here, we settled initially in Vancouver. We lived there for about seven years, and then I think because my family came from Africa, they wanted the real Canadian experience, and Vancouver just wasn't cold enough, so they decided to go to Edmonton. <laughs> That's the only thing I can explain of how we ended up in Edmonton, but nonetheless, Edmonton has been great to my family. It's been a great home. It's, been, uh, it's, it's given us a lot of successes. It's been a lot of hard work, especially for my parents having to start over again, but I don't think my parents would ever look back uh, again to Uganda, even though, of course, they feel like it's their home still, but this Canada is our new home, and that's the way that we've proceeded. And what a home it is when you think about it, that 25 years later, after a family comes here as refugees, that their son can sit in the federal parliament. How many countries can say that? Right? How many countries can say that? We're very lucky in the country that we have, and we can always make it better. There's no doubt about it. But when I think about that, and I think especially when I did happen to succeed in getting elected, my parents, I think that was the real sense that Canada is our home, that this is the place that we're going to continue to build. And I think many of us can relate to stories like that that we've seen and heard from, from people across the country. But I know that for me, that experience of my family coming here, I think, had a huge impact on me growing up in particular. A lot of people found it surprising that at a young age I got involved and interested in politics, but it was during my high school years that I developed an interest in politics, but in particular in federal politics, because I, so coming from Edmonton, we're quite far away from Ottawa, and we feel like we don't really know Ottawa as well. And so I definitely had an interest in federal politics, and when I decided to, when I graduated from high school, I moved out to Ottawa, and I worked, I worked in the House of Commons, and I actually went to school at the University of Ottawa because I wanted to learn French. I didn't speak a lot of French coming from Edmonton, and I thought that would be a good opportunity. Now, for that time, when I was in, in Ottawa, I actually worked for a Liberal MP at that time. Now, don't hold it against me. Don't hold it against me. At least I started to see the light. Look where I am today. It's a, it's a progress. As I say, I forget the saying, but, you know, if, you, if you're a, a so, if you're a liberal, I think at the age of 20, you're, you're uh, soft in the heart, and if you're at the age of 30, you're stupid in the brain or something like that. <laughs> but nonetheless, it was something, I, I know I've, bad, I, I've totally uh, broken that uh, expression down, but the, uh, the fact is, for me, it gave me a chance to compare. I studied politics and economics 
and I worked at the House of Commons. So it really gave me a chance to see the way that political parties put in practice different things that they talk about. And for me, I found that you know I definitely was not in favor of what I saw in the Liberal Party at the time, because even though my community uh, and others that I know ethnic communities supported the Liberals, what I found is that the Liberals never really took our communities seriously. They talked about having us involved and they used us in different sort of things when it came to policy announcements or different window dressing, I like to call it, but never would they encourage those members of the community to get involved with the party and run and run in ridings that you can win. And I was shocked when I saw that sort of thing because it was completely the opposite of what I thought. And then I went uh, completely, as I said, the other way. I left, I left Ottawa, went back to Edmonton. I got involved in a small business with my family. And I did that for about four years. I ran a restaurant business, coffee shop business. And then I was encouraged by a colleague of mine to run for politics. I was only 24 at the time. And I said, you know, you must be crazy. No one's going to take me seriously. No one's going to even think I'm old enough to be able to be in parliament. But he said, you know, that's the difference. We need to encourage different people. We need to encourage different ages. And we need to have better diversity represented. And it was amazing that he said that to me at that age. And I thought, you know, well, what have I got to lose? I might as well give it a try. So I decided to run. And I went through a nomination process, which was a, compet a very competitive one. I had to fight against four other people in a nomination. We won the nomination on the first ballot, which is quite an achievement and gave us a, a boost for the actual election. And then on June 2nd in 1997, I became a member of parliament. And uh, what a change, going from coffee shop guru to member of parliament. And it was quite a, a work, work change as well, because obviously being in Edmonton, I didn't live very far from my business. So you get up in the morning and drive to work. Well, here, I had to get up in the morning, drive to the airport, and fly for four hours by the time I got to work. So it's quite a change in lifestyle, especially when you uh, live in the Western Riding. But it's been an incredible experience and an incredible honor. And I tell you, what an, what an amazing uh, feeling it is to be able to represent uh, so many different Canadians. And I still remember some of the first uh, experiences when I was first elected. I, uh, I remember when I was in the House of Commons. Now, you can imagine, I had turned 25 just before the actual election. But uh, here I am. At that time, we were in opposition. And I saw Jean Gretchen, who was the prime minister at the time. We had Paul Martin, we had a number of other leaders, Preston Manning, Joe Clark was there, I think Jean Charest, there was a whole bunch of people who all my life I saw growing up watching on TV. And here I was now, one of them. Now you can imagine, 25 years old, a little bit intimidating. I remember when I stood up the first time, the cameras were rolling, the galleries were full, every member was in their, in their seats, and I was asked to ask a question in the first day of Parliament. And I remember I tried to look calm and collected, but when I stood up, my knees were actually shaking, if you can imagine, in Parliament. But I managed to get the question out, and luckily I didn't screw it up too much. But, uh, but what an experience, and from there it's just been an incredible history. And I remember one of the most interesting things that had happened when after I got elected, every member of Parliament, and Benson will experience this hopefully very shortly, but uh, when you do get elected, you have a chance to then make a maiden speech in the House of Commons. And when you make that speech, you get a chance to talk about uh, the speech from the throne. You get to talk about a few different things that you'd like to talk about. Well, I wanted to first of all thank my parents, as I said, because they were one of the biggest supporters for me. And I know that when I first told my dad I was serious of running, he shook his head and said, politics, that's a dirty game. <laughs> but he was very proud that I wanted to run and he supported me. So I wanted to thank my parents for that. I also wanted to thank the people in Edmonton and Strathcona the riding that I represent, because it was the first time they elected such a young person. So to put a faith in someone like me, I wanted to thank them for that, and I, was, I appreciated that opportunity. Then I finally talked about what I thought I was going to bring to the debate, especially when it comes to uh, the area of intergovernmental affairs, was what the area I was working on. I had a block member ask me a question, and I'll never forget it. He said, do you think the people in Edmonton, Strathcona, consider Quebec a people? Because as you can imagine, he was trying to make the case of why they should be separate, why they should be a separate nation. And I said, well, I think the people in Edmonton, Strathcona believe in equality. That it doesn't matter what language you speak, what race you are, what background you are, that as Canadians, we're all equal. And it doesn't matter if you're a Quebecer, or in my case, an Ismaili Muslim, that we're all equal. So I thought I was pretty proud of this exchange, and I thought it went pretty well is that even in the House of Commons, uh, even though Canada is so diverse, and we know that, 
We know there's so many different communities, so many different cultures. So we're obviously not as well represented in there as we are on the streets of this country. And to have that sort of initial exchange and then have everyone in Ottawa, the translators, all the people that are working say, oh my God, we made a mistake. There is such a thing, isn't it? A smiling Muslim, not a smiling Muslim, although many of us are smiling, but there's, there's still you know, a difference. Now they've learned that and the representation has become better. And people like Benson and others who are going to continue to work to represent ridings like this one are going to help to improve on that and going to help to improve the diversity and the reality that makes this Canada, this country so great, Canada. So again, I want to wish you all the best, Benson, and, and your team, and I think it's an excellent, uh, excellent thing that you're running. So, But in particular, we've had some real firsts in our party that often the media don't like to talk about, that's for sure, but we have to talk about those stories. And I think about some of the representation, some of the diverse representation. We have the first ever cabinet minister from Japanese background, first ever member of the House of Commons in Japanese background, Bev Oda, many of you have seen her, she's our Minister of Heritage, uh, first to ever Japanese K to be elected. Uh, also, we have Deepak Obrai, who's been born in Africa, some of you may have seen him. He's also a colleague of mine from Tanzania, from Hindu uh, background, as well as um, we've got uh, the first ever Chinese uh, Heritage Minister, Michael Chong, who served for a while when he was Heritage Minister, Nina Graywall, who's Punjabi, Inky Mark, who many of you know, who's also Chinese. Uh, we've got Senator Ann Cools, who's of African-Canadian background. We have uh, Senator Donald Oliver, who African-Canadian as well, from, uh, from the Maritimes area. And of course, I talked to you about my story, who was the first ever, I was the first ever Muslim MP elected to Parliament, which is hard to imagine as well. But again, all of these firsts were with the Conservative Party. So despite what some people tell you about the Conservative Party, how open they are and how welcoming they are, generally it's usually the Liberals saying it's not true. But look, we've demonstrated it with the people who are in our party, people who are making decisions and who are part of the leadership. And that's something that I think is so key when you stop to think about it. But the first ever multicultural, multiculturalism act in the world was produced under a conservative government in 1988. And that was later on uh, you know, built on by the fact that we actually now embrace multiculturalism. We see it as a thing that came from the charter, but the actual act was passed in 1988. Again, the, I think some of you may know the history. The first ever Chinese Canadian MP, his name was Douglas Jung, and he was elected in Vancouver in 1957. Now that's an incredible thing with the Conservative Party. So that's an incredible history even the Chinese Canadians have with the Conservative parties. And there's a number of other uh, people when you think about the first black cabinet minister ever, Lincoln Alexander, was part of uh, part of the Conservative Party. He also went on to serve as a lieutenant governor, uh, lieutenant governor, lieutenant governor of Canada. Uh, first women cabinet minister, uh, first minister John uh, Diefenbaker introduced the Canadian Bill of Rights and that was the first time ever that conservatives are trying to make things equal for all different people who existed in Canada. And of course uh, a conservative government in 1908 delivered redress to the Japanese community and um, in, it was one of the highlights, highest single year of levels of immigration. And this is another thing that I often have battles with with the Liberals. They say that they're the party of immigration. Well, if you start to look at some of the trends, and even already it's starting to change, but under the conservatism with Mulroney, some of the highest levels of immigration came in in the country when they were in power. And even under the Liberals, if you look at the actual targets, They've gone, they went uh, significantly, they went down over those years. We're trying to change that now. We're making a lot of changes in immigration to try to improve. We need the people in this country. I don't have to tell you that. You can imagine me from Alberta. Our economy is so hot right now. We need people to come to this country. We want to make it easier for them, not more difficult for them. So that's something that we're going to continue to do and continue to build on with new Canadians. Now, just over the last year, because I talked a little about a history, over the last year, I think many of you are aware of some of the great things that we were able to do in just a short period of time. Unlike, uh, I found, the previous government who talked a lot about things, we actually went about getting the business of getting it done. And in our first budget, we cut the right of landing fees. And this is something that I know new immigrants, new Canadians have said is a big burden on Canadians. But we cut them from $975 in half, which has helped to make a huge impact on Canadians thinking of coming here. And of course, uh, one of the key things that I hear from communities across the country, the credential recognition. Many people are trained internationally 
Fortunately, in the past, when they've come to Canada, their credentials are not recognized, and we need to change that. It's been going on for too long. And in our last budget, we put in $18 million to create a streamlining process so that we can actually ensure that those people who are underemployed can actually work uh, as, as in their professions and their recognition gets recognized. Finally, uh, one of the other things I'd just like to mention is that, and I was talking to, uh, I know, I think it was Danny at my table, about the idea of settlement funding and how that's so important for new to Canadians. Well, the past government, previous government, never improved that funding. We, in our last budget, put that funding, increased it, I think, very significantly. We invested $307 million for settlement funding to help communities across the country actually establish their own communities. And I think that has gone a long way already to helping those, uh, many of them volunteer groups and helping communities like yours and others help those new Canadians coming and wanting to be a part of Canada. We find that that's the best way to be able to help those communities is working through those settlement groups. And I don't think you'll see that funding remain stagnant. I think you'll see it improved as we continue to, to work with those, those, uh, those various groups. We also extended citizenship to foreign-born children adopted by Canadian families. This was something that was never done and we needed to do that. And one of the things that was important to me in particular, and I think a lot of young people who come here, whether they're from the Chinese community or other communities, I have the University of Alberta that's in my riding. And one of the unfortunate things for international students is they could never work on campus. There was all off of campus. There was always a restriction when they were coming to Canada to get an education. They couldn't work off campus. Well, we made that change so that new uh, students, international students, can actually work, get the experience they need uh, within businesses that need the help. And even if they want to stay and remain here, we're trying to make it easier for them to stay here as well. So there was a number of great things we did, and I think, of course. One of the big things, and I know I hear that from a number of members of the Chinese community across the country, but it didn't take very long for our government. I think it was June, and we took office in end of January. But June 22nd, as you know, uh, the Prime Minister offered an official apology on behalf of all government of Canada and all Canadians for the head tax paid by Chinese immigrants. And that's something that I think needed to be done. It needed to be done, and thank goodness we did it, and we can move on and keep building with uh, with all the Canadians, especially from the Chinese community, that have helped to make Canada such a great place when you think of all the different families that we have. So just in a short year and a half, we've been able to do that, all those achievements, and we continue to try to build on the things that uh, that for so long were broken under the previous government. It's a lot slower than we'd like, though, let me tell you. If we were in a majority government, we would be able to move so much faster, so much quicker in building some of the things that need to be done, and we wouldn't have to play the games uh, with members like, uh, like Jim from this riding, who continue to cause problems for all of us, rather than try to improve Canada and make it a better place. I mean, Dion said it after his leadership bid, right? He said, he said liberals have to get to power immediately. And then what are you going to do when you get there? Break the, cover, break the country down like you did over the last 13 years? Well, no thank you. We don't need that anymore, Dion and the rest of your, rest of your liberals, Jim Carrey, Giannis, and others. We need new hope, people like Benson and other Canadians who can help to build this country and build it to where it's supposed to be and improve on it and, and be actively part of, of solutions rather than problems. And I'll tell you, my friends, with your hard work, with your dedication and your interest, and again, I want to thank you for all of that, you will help make that difference. But when that election comes, we'll see people like Benson elected to the House of Commons, and we'll see a majority conservative government with all your help, and we'll finally restore Canada to where it should be. So thank you very much for having me here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pauline Browse. I was a former member of Parliament in uh, Ottawa. And it's, uh, it's my great pleasure to thank uh, uh, Mr. Jaffer for being here with us tonight when he was talking about some of those some of those firsts and some of those things that are being put into place now after started under the Mulroney government. Uh, the Multiculturalism Act was uh, was in place when, when I was a member of Parliament. I was very proud to be able to put that through the House of Commons. And now to build on that is just a great success for all of us. Um, to have a young leader like Raymond Jaffer in the House of Commons is a great credit not only to him but to Canada. And uh, he is the chair of the National Caucus 
and of course if you're chair of the National Caucus that means that you've got the trust of the Prime Minister of this great country and so we appreciate so very much you being here we appreciate the leadership that you are you're having and I was in Ottawa just on Tuesday and happened to attend the Immigration Committee and I agree absolutely wholeheartedly I was absolutely embarrassed at the representation from this riding as how he presented himself at that immigration committee. It was absolutely appalling. And if any of you had been there, I'm sure you would have felt the same way also. So um, we thank you for being here. We wish you well with your good work. We wonder when the election will be. Maybe you can let us in on that. Uh, we were all ready to go in, uh, in June. Uh, for a June election, but now we have a little more time to get prepared in order to have uh, Benson Lowe as our, as our Member of Parliament for Agent Court. I've known Benson now for many, many years, Grace and Jackie, and uh, to have Benson step up to the plate to be the candidate is one of the great pleasures for me. I've watched Benson in doing uh, so many good community work as a professional, as a medical professional, uh, a person who cares, a person who really cares about the community, a person who is going to bring that talent and dedication to Ottawa on the health care issues, and his background on the police services. I mean, we know what the situation is with the justice issues and the crime in this particular uh, part of, uh, of the city. And to have Benson with that first-hand knowledge of how to deal with these issues is going to be a great credit for our community to have Benson there. To have someone respected, a person who really is one that not only professional, but he actually has demonstrated in his work that he will be the leader for us in agent court scarborough agent court so ladies and gentlemen i want to introduce to you the next member of parliament for scarborough agent court dr benson Lau. ladies and gentlemen honorable marvin jaffer friends welcome good evening i'm overwhelmed by your presence I'm overwhelmed and humbled by your support. There are three simple statements that will sum up why we are here tonight. First, you are here to support me as the conservative candidate for Scarborough Agent Court in the next special election. Second, you are here to give me the financial support which is necessary to win a winning campaign in the next federal election. Of course, when the election is called, I will go to Ottawa as the Member of Parliament for Scarborough Agent Court with your help. Harper's government has invested billions and billions of dollars to improve the Canadian life. I came to Canada 40 years ago with nothing and to become what I am right now. That is a blessing from a wonderful, wonderful nation. I'd like to pass this opportunities and the Canadian value, all the guest speakers are talking about, equality, opportunity, to our next generation and the generation to come. That's why I go into politics. I want to contribute. I want to be in Harper's government, or Harper's team, to help him to make a difference for the life of Canadians. Say, I think all the Ghana, I see, I see, I see, 都是因為加拿大給我的我希望有機會回報回國家這個對我有恩的國家我希望能夠在 Harper 
為繼續為大家服務。Of course, l i k any any organization or our activities, one day a campaign requires a lot of resources. Mine is no exception. Although volunteers going to be my backbone or the backbone of my campaign, and at this time, I like to. Ask my campaign team to stand up and be recognized for all the hard work that they have done for me to bring me at this point. They work hard for their campaign. They believe in me to bring them the representation that they deserve. Thank you. But although volunteers is the backbone of my campaign, but the reality is a lot of resources require a lot of financial support, money to operate a campaign office, to rent furniture, to rent equipment, to print brochure, to print lawn signs. And to setting up telephone equipment so we could call you all and ask for your support when the election is called, that you will vote for Benson Lau. Your presence here tonight has put me a step closer to achieve that goal. 好似任何嘅活動都需要好大嘅財政資源去支援嘅。競選亦唔例外，我嘅競選咧個經費咧亦好龐大，需要大約係十萬誒咁、呃、大嘅經費。依啲傳賴你哋嘅支持，你哋今日咧俾到我一個好有強力嘅信心，已經讓我咧踏上成功嘅一步。我喺依度係衷心多謝你哋嘅支持。Scarborough Agent Court is a wonderful, wonderful community, and that's why I choose Scarborough Agent Court. I like to represent this very wonderful community that reflect the multiculturalism of Canada. It reflect the Canadian value in this community. But it's a community not without its own share of problems. I believe, however, these problems could be improved if we have a stronger representation in Ottawa <laughs> to get us a fair share of the government investment. As I said, government invests billions and billions of dollars to improve our life. Why can't we have our fair share in Scarborough Agent Court?我今日有榮幸為聯邦保守黨我希望可以為我們的社區爭取福利得到我們應得的投資政府的資源去保障我們未來下一代以後的一代能繼續享有加拿大給我們的福利和我們的機會When I go to Ottawa as your member of parliament, I will bring your voice to Ottawa so it will be heard. I will help you to make Scarborough Agent Court a safer, better, and stronger community. I will give you the real representation that Scarborough Agent Court deserves. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. The idea from Tim Hawking to the member of parliament. Thank you. Thank you for coming.